everyone and welcome back to another Meet the Team interview. This week we are interviewing Gabriella, uh, who's kindly doing this interview for us. Do you want to just introduce yourself and tell us a bit about your role at CIS? Yeah, sure. So my name is Gabriella Procaccini. I am the operations manager at CIS um, and my role is to look after the help desk. Um, that's kind of like the main part of my job. Um, but I look after the processes, procedures, um, tickets, and also the client side of when a ticket is logged and, and how it's seen through. Great. And in your role as operations manager, what kind of things do you see on a daily basis? Sure. Um, so I can do anything from the uh, technical side of things to do with, because I started off as a systems engineer. So I sometimes get involved in the actual lot uh, the actual issues themselves that need to be fixed or any service requests um, typically on a daily basis I will be looking at the tickets in the queue that need to be assigned out to engineers um, I will also be helping with the relationship between the clients and the engineers if there's any queries from that side of things and then I look after the uh, three uh, sections that we've got so we've got three well, not necessarily departments, but the little sections of our engineers. So we've got our systems engineers who look after all of the um, the first response and some of the services that delivered. And then you have the senior engineers that look mainly at the projects, but they can also do some break fix tickets as well. And then we've got the technical account managers who are also senior engineers who look after the accounts for our clients and um, can do technical work as well. So I oversee a large majority of everything that goes on basically um just to make sure that the the engine is is running smoothly and you were once systems engineer then so you you've obviously got gone up the ranks since you joined however yeah you know, when, when when was it you joined cis so close to five years now um i started as a systems engineer um then i moved into a role of um team leader uh, which is a very similar to like a supervisor type role. Um, so I would assist the operations manager at the time um, and it's making sure that there's that uh, um, running of the team, the, the, you know, helping them to all focus into the right direction and making sure that if, you know, any duplicate issues come in, that's called court and, and, and helping with the, the day-to-day running. Um, and then I was a team leader for, I think one and a half, nearly two years. And then I was uh, promoted to operations manager after that. Yeah, great. And um, you were saying as part of your role, you were overseeing things like logging of tickets from clients, that kind of thing. Um, just in, in brief, what, what are the kind of steps a client would usually take to do that? Yeah, sure. So there's different ways that um, a, uh, a client can log up an issue with us. Um, we have the, uh, the phone obviously, so they can phone in um, and they can log a ticket with an engineer. And typically when they do that, um, if we can at the time actually look at the issue there and then, then we attempt to do that, obviously depending on you know, what's happening at the time. Um, and also depends what the request is as well. But the other way that they can log a ticket is through email. So they will email in and that will automatically create a ticket in the system. Um, and then that will then fire off notifications to them to say uh, a ticket has been logged and then an engineer or myself mm -hmm. will look at those um, tickets and then we will assess the priority that will then get processed and then an engineer will then be assigned depending on the priority of that ticket. Mm -hmm. There are also other ways that tickets get created through um, uh, monitoring so we might get alerts to the to the help desk which will create tickets and those alerts can either come from monitoring services or um, antivirus services, backup services, so whatever you know, parts that we've um, configured with those alerts will come through to us. And how long does that kind of little process take from a client logging a ticket to them getting some kind of response? Yeah, sure. So we have different um, service level agreements depending on the urgency of the ticket. Um, so uh, CAT1, for example, um, is um, within the hour um but we we tend to we tend because of the the team that we have um cat ones and cat twos which are um quite uh, important issues that you know like either the whole system's gone down or partial um services which are vital to the company has stopped working um we respond to them quite quickly so like within the hour even though the sla is going to be a slightly longer than that cat two is a sla of four hours for example 
um, but a typical uh, cat three for example um, you know uh, like a one person uh, having an issue um, but it's not uh, the whole of the company um, can be done within a response within six hours um, but like I said depending on the service level agreement um, it is quite quick within the day basically but yeah and obviously at the moment things are very different obviously we're doing this from home um, how has the kind how has this situation challenged the running of the help desk you guys do yeah absolutely um, so we were we were obviously monitoring the issue with the pandemic like you know everyone else was you know with the news and everything um, and as early as you know the beginning of March we decided that even though we have the ability to work from home so we always have practiced that but it's only ever been like one or two people working from home it's never been the whole of the team mm -hmm. um, so we thought right before any lockdown is um, declared let's see if you know if we can do it if we can do a day where everybody just an emergency right you know everyone work from home so we did a test day um, at the beginning of, of March and we put well I put certain procedures in place to make sure that the communication was um, was similar to being in the same room basically because you can imagine when you've got a team that works together especially the systems engineers when yeah. something comes in and so they say so there's a very big issue um, and when you're in the same room you can verbally you know you can hear people talking on the phone or talking to each other so it's easier to have that that you know that, that gel within the team but when you're all working from home it's you know how, how do you replace that so through technology such as teams uh whatsapp um you know the emails and um, notifications through our ticketing system i had to structure it in a way that we had you know notifications that were were there to help bring the team together even though they were far away so that that um practice day that we did was very successful we learned a few things uh, we made a few you know a few changes and then we decided um on the 12th of march to have everybody working from home um, and so it was before our clients were told to fully work from home um, and again it was a case of right we need to make sure you know proofs in the pudding we had to make sure that we were doing um, the, the working from home element with all the VPNs in place and the security and notifications and our phones are working and um, before our clients do so that we can then fully support them when they go to work from home um, and you know it's, it's been it's been really good to see that unfold it's it's something that we would never have expected to do um so the fact that we've been able to do it in this order um we've been able to help clients then replicate similar scenarios that we have um having the virtual servers you know in the um at the bunker and uh, being able to access that from home um lots of lots of little things because we had done it it was you know even easier to be able to then recommend how you know to, to structure even though some clients have got a slightly different setup than us mm -hmm. um it's it's still good to experience it to then be able to you know recommend I must say you make it sound very easy <laughs> and like you've got it completely <laughs> organized I imagine when you were perhaps testing this out maybe there were some challenges and there are obviously there are lots of businesses dealing with these kind of challenges do you have any kind of what was your like number one challenge and what advice might you give to other businesses at mm, the moment i th i think it was the um i mean th th from a technical point of view the challenges were you know access accessing data mm. um being able to um be as much of a unit so far away from each other um, and the you know relying on things like phone calls making sure that you know your your systems were diverting correctly and you were able to transfer through i mean it sounds very simple transferring a phone call but you know when you have people um relying on their own internet connection and such so the, yeah there, there were quite a lot of challenges from an advice point of view it there's also um you know slightly away from the technical element just having a lot of understanding for people having to work in their own homes you know it's a it's something that this whole pandemic uh, emotionally has it affects absolutely everybody nobody is it gets away from the from such a massive change in environment so you've got your 
your uh, technical change in environment, but you've got your also emotional uh, change in environment as well. And, and as a manager, um, trying to support your team and also make them feel like they're still supported and, um, you know, that, that you have regular catch ups with them um, from a managerial point of view. Um, just to make sure that everybody is still focused, uh, you know, the motivation can easily be distracted when you're at home. <laughs> I was saying to, I was saying to one of my colleagues, uh, the fridge distracts me more than anything in my, <laughs> in my flat. So, um, so yeah, so it's, it's, it's so much, so much that we wouldn't have thought we'd have to think about. You yeah. know, like I said, it's not just the technical element of it, but, but uh, yeah, that's what I would say. But um, it's key, isn't it? For a lot of it. Sorry. Communication is key, I guess, for a oh, lot of it. Absolutely. And that's that's what our industry is all about, communication. Whether it be a communication from, you know, one server to another or, you know, one colleague to a, a client or, you know, all that all those kind of things. Communication is absolutely key. So making sure that um if there was uh anything that you had in particular that you did within the office, mm -hmm. that you tried to replicate that from a distance um and i think you know having things like this like zoom meetings and uh, just zoom catch-ups or or teams catch-ups whatever video platform you want to use <laughs> um it's so important to just keep the team going and keep everybody gelled together and as a unit yeah and when i was talking to neil a few weeks ago we were talking a lot about this kind of keeping company spirits up and i know you guys have a quiz and stuff going on so uh, yeah. i don't know part of that but um I think yeah. they all, everyone seems to really be proud of CIS in, in, in the way that you guys communicate and have gelled as a team over the years. So. That's great. Yeah, that is great to hear. I mean, we have such a good team. And I know a lot of people say, oh, you're biased, you'll say that about your team. But yeah. it is true. You know, it, uh, um, we do have a good team. And the, when we're all in the office together, everyone gets on really well, you know, and to then... Uh, you know there's, there's a lot of energy in in the office there's a lot of um you know it you either love it or you hate it <laughs> you know you're either with it or you need somebody else to be with it for you and so that's why you know a lot of engineers last as long as they do in this industry because they they love to do the job um and you know we have the added bonus of everybody just getting on so well so there's a really good energy in the office and, and trying to replicate that remotely um, means that these zoom parties that i call them <laughs> the zoom parties uh once a week is just for them to to kind of you know reignite that yeah. that camaraderie um and then just you know and they help each other and they support each other and that's you know more than i could ask for it's brilliant yeah. and just to finish off um in in your five years what have been your personal highlights at cis um, well, there's been a few actually. I mean, my reason for moving to CIS was because I wanted to be um, part of a slightly larger company where I had the room for growth. Mm. Um, and CIS has always promoted that, um, that, you know, growth in education. So I've been able to um, pass more certificates being with CIS. Um, I, I'll be honest, I, I didn't quite see myself having this kind of career path with CIS, <laughs> but not to say that I'm not grateful, I'm very grateful, um, but it was, it was great opportunity and, and, and I surprised myself that, um, that I really do enjoy, um, you know, looking at overseeing and, and, and picking out the, you know, the, the parts of the, the processes and procedures where we can improve and, you know, and it's, it's a lot of fun. Um, <laughs> sir? And you're good at it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, but yeah, so, so obviously making manager was, was the biggest highlight, but I, I've also really enjoyed seeing how the company has grown, uh, how we've grown, how we've, we've been flexible, how we've always, um, you know, listened to ideas and, you know, looked at things and assessed, assessed them well. Um, and I, you know, and I'm proud to be part of the, uh, managerial team you know my my peers and and um yeah so it's, it's it's great like I said it's a great team both directors and and the and the my colleagues has been it's been great absolutely well thank you so so much for doing this interview Gabrielle it's been an absolute pleasure to talk to you and hear about your story with CIS uh, thank you everyone who's watched this and uh, we look forward to doing another interview next week thank you bye cheers thank you